Hello, good evening. Welcome to Kamna Television Main News. My name is Jeffrey Ziambo to present. We apologize for bringing the news late. This is due to technical challenges first. The top stories in the news tonight. UPND laughs off Socialist Party candidate abduction claims. School grants misuse revelations sudden nakes. Government finalizes drought disaster response plan. In international news, Togo's legislative election campaigns begin. And in sports news, former Chipolo Polo striker Kalaba in critical condition after road accident. These are more stories coming out shortly after the break. Enjoy the benefits of an instant loan with us ranging from 1,000 kwacha to 750,000 kwacha paid express once collateral is viewed, valued and verified. Call us on 0763-595-359 or 0779-432-993. Classified Financial Express, here as your financial friend. Hello again, the news in detail. Members from the ruling United Party for National Development, UPND, in Lusaka's Kawata constituency have visited the wife of former late area member of parliament, Levi Mkandawire. Mr. Levi Mkandawire died in a fatal road accident that happened outside his house in Lusaka. Leading the team, UPND member Mike Mulabe says the legacy of Mr. Mkandawire should be kept alive for his good leadership and will in serving in the, people, the people of Kawata. Mr. Mulabe has since launched a Levi Mkandawire annual football tournament in his constituency to honor the late lawmaker. More in this report. On 18th November 2021, UPND Kawata then member of parliament Levi Mukandawire was involved in a fatal accident. Reports indicate that he was hit by a speeding vehicle outside his woodlands residence. Two years down the line, in memory of his legacy as Kawata member of parliament, an annual football tournament for both girls and boys in his name has been launched. Some members of the UPND administration Saturday took time out of their schedule and visited the late Levi Mukandawire's wife who has not been well and is currently recovering. Leading the group, UPND member Mike Mulabe wished the widow a quick recovery and handed over a few foodstuffs to the family. It has been long since our dear friend passed on and um, then we just heard the news that on behalf of everyone here. And the other thing uh, about widow which we want to mention is that uh, we don't want the name Mulevi Mukandawire to die just like that. So we have come here to also request and inform you that in order to honor our late MP, we are organizing an annual tournament which shall be called the late Levi Mkandawire Memorial Tournament. And another UPND member shared a few words of encouragement to the widow. Mr. Mulabe says the late member of parliament played a huge role in Kabwata, therefore the annual football tournament will be a memory of his legacy. Mkandawire should not just die like that. Yes. Yes, yes. That name should live on in the Kawata constituency. Yes. Yes. For what he did for the party, for what he did for the constituency, we want to leave, leave the name who left Mkandawire to die in vain. Mm -hmm. So we went to plead with the widow to seek permission at Tipuna Tuzingemo Zinaewa Munawa Nubaleti, Levi Mkandawire, so that it can remain in Kawata constituency through a tournament. The tournament will include all five wards of Kawata constituency that will compete in the final on the day the late Levi Mukandawire was buried. Cherish Sibote 
For Comnet News, le SACA. The National Action for Quality Education in Zambia, NACES, is saddened with revelations that more than 2 billion kwacha of school grants were misused in 182 schools countrywide. Recently, the Ministry of Finance and National Planning revealed that a sample audit of 182 schools countrywide on utilization of school grants from January 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023 uncovered incidents of abuse and administration's failure to manage the funds. Speaking in an interview with CalmNet News, Nakes Executive Director Dr. Aaron Chansa says the revelations make sad reading as the trend compromises the quality of education. Dr. Chansa has since urged the Minister of Education Douglas Siakalima to probe the matter and ensure that all erring officers are dealt with according to the law. We have seen the reports uh, from the Minister of Finance about uh, the abuses that are happening uh, in schools with regards to uh, grants. Uh, that report is very, very disturbing. Uh, this is what we have been saying uh, all along, especially to do with the unending and expensive meetings. Uh, we are happy that uh, the Minister of Finance undertook that, uh, um, uh, that exercise, which has given us very disturbing revelations that uh, school grants are being abused and uh, uh, what we need to do is that uh, we need to call upon the, the Minister of Education uh, to be on top of uh, this issue. We want, for, for example, to put an end uh, to these unnecessary meetings. They are very expensive. They are costing the, the sector so much. Uh, we need to make sure that we reduce on such, uh, such meetings. We also need to make sure that uh, the audits um, uh, are very close. We need to make sure that uh, schools are audited regularly. Uh, trainings must be done also to schools, especially uh, primary schools which have no uh, trained uh, accountants. Uh, there must also be uh, adherence to uh, the school guidelines, the guidelines for, for the grants, and those that will be found wanting must be able to be disciplined. We can't afford to lose uh, such important public funds. We want to see uh, those funds being used uh, uh, towards uplifting the standards of um, uh, education in the country and also attending to the issues that affect teachers and also learners uh, and not to spend on such um, and ending meetings and also stealing and abusing. I think those that will be found wanting must see the boot. We don't want um, uh, stealing and also abuse of such very, very important uh, uh, funds in our country. Government has finalized the formulation of a drought response plan which will soon be released to the members of the public. Minister of Water Development and Sanitation Mike M. Porsche disclosed this Friday evening in Lusaka during the launch of the 2023 Water Supply and Sanitation Sector Project report. Mr. Mbosha said that in light of the completed plan, the ministry is focusing on increasing investments in water harvesting mechanisms to enable irrigation development so as to stimulate agriculture production as a response to the 2023-2024 budget drought. Meanwhile, speaking at the same event, National Water Supply and Sanitation Council Nwasko Vice Board Chairperson Lillian Matesu said financing gaps for water supply companies have continued to impact negatively on service delivery. More in the following report. The National Water Supply and Sanitation Council on Wasco Friday evening launched the 2023 Water Supply and Sanitation Sector Report. The launch of the report also saw some utilities and journalists walk away with various prizes. In his opening remarks, Nwasco Director Engineer Kelvin Chitumbo held continued collaboration with government and cooperating partners for various milestones recorded in Zambia's water and sanitation sector. We are gathered today not only to launch a report, but important also to just highlight some of the successes and challenges and also opportunities and future outlook of the sector as we strive toward increased access to clean and safe drinking water. Nwasco board chairperson was represented at the event by board vice chairperson Lydia Matesu. The ever-growing financing gap that the commercial utilities are grappling with 
has resulted in a compromise of water supply and sanitation service provision with utilities failing in the stipulated service level guarantees. The sector recorded negative trends in hours of supply, collection efficiency, and operation and maintenance cost coverage by collection. Whilst recognizing the need to have a cost-effective tariffs in Zambia's water and sanitation sector, some cooperating partners at the event urged water utilities and government to enhance efficiency in operations and service delivery. Thirdly, there is need for result-based financing in water sector investments. Therefore, government should pursue policies on the use of public finances and funds from developing partners and obviously from its own purse to incentivize efficiency improvements in utilities by linking finance to verifiable improvements in operational efficiency and service delivery. Officiating at the event, Minister of Water Development and Sanitation, Mike Imposha said reforms in water sector management are long overdue. And I want to assure you that government takes those concerns very seriously. I also take note of the burning issue of the need to review the tariffs. And I must say that I regret as a minister of the sector that there has been a delay in attending to this issue, but be rest assured that this matter is receiving active attention and I desire to bring this to a close. We should be attending to this matter pretty soon. Mr. Mposha also used the event to update the nation on government's response to the 2023-24 drought disaster. My ministry has been working with line ministries and the, the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU, to come up with a coordinated response towards the drought. I would like to report that the response plan has been finalized and will be released to the general public in the coming few days. For Community TV News, Afia Skaptula, Lusaka. Lusaka-based Chadley House School has held its fourth girls' conference aimed at equipping adolescents with skills and tools beyond academics. The event attracted about 300 girls from the school as well as neighboring communities. One of the participants, Wanzi Tembo, told Camnet News in an interview that the conference was insightful as she learned other crucial topics such as mental health. Chadley House School Executive Director Patricia Siwila says the conference teaches girls to identify themselves through teaching, good attitudes and other life skills. Governance expert Brebna Changala says the UPND administration must come to terms that it is running a country and not a small business. Reacting to the withdrawn police call-out of Father Musosa, Mr. Changala says the clergyman was a celebrity to UPND when he stood for it, but today is a villain for saying the truth. He says the Catholic Church is a major character in social support and spreading the word of God in the country, hence should be respected. They must come to terms that they are running a country and not a contemba. This is a country of 20 million people plus, and the Catholics are major players in terms of social support and the spread of the word of God. The homily that Father Mkosha made on Easter was timely. They were supposed to listen to him and digest what he said, not to send him a police call out. That was a failure in management and abuse of state power. This is the same UPND that called the Archbishop, Archbishop Alec Banda Lusfa, and they have never apologized. The president has not apologized. The Secretary General of the Party has never apologized. It's business as usual. And uh, is always used as an attack dog in matters of this nature. On this one, he must swallow his vomit as well. The call out was there. And I want to school Kawana, you do not write 
such sentiments on a government headed paper as if it's coming from a UPND secretariat where you start dragging other opposition political party in a government communique which is supposed to be sober and well written by technocrats. Mr. Kawana, you are a civil servant, not an operative of the UPND. You have disgraced the system, you have disgraced the people of Zambia. You are not fit to hold that office of a permanent secretary. Your behavior must be watched very carefully. And this is a call to the secretary to the cabinet. Can you look into Mr. Kawana's conduct? United Party for National Development, UPND youths, have charged that former President Edgar Lungu has no moral right to comment on the country's economic situation as he put the country in a current mess. UPND National Youth Spokesperson Phineas Ipumolo says Mr. Lungu presided over a government that saw massive looting of public resources as seen from public officials forfeiting money as up as 24 million US dollars. President Edgar Chagualungu, he has got no moral right to comment about the governance of this country. We all know that President, former President uh, Edgar Lungu is the one who has put this country in the situation the country we are in today. The PF must be ashamed of themselves that it is, it is during their tenure of office that people were looting government resources, public money. We saw yesterday Mr. Miringolungu, the state forfeited 24 million dollars and when we say that the PF stole government money, this is what we, what, what, what we are talking about. The PF have got no moral right whatsoever to comment about the current situation that the country is facing right now. Because these are same people who have put us in this situation where we are today. And President Adainde Chirema, true to his weight, he said Bali is going to fix it. And the current we are fixing the economy of this country. And UPN has scored more than enough. The United Party for National Development, UPND, has distanced itself from allegations of candidate abductions in Thursday's ward by election nominations. The Socialist Party has accused UPND of abducting its councillor candidates in Gwembe, Luangwa, and Kapombok, claiming the move is aimed at barring it from participating. Speaking in an interview, UPND Deputy Media Director Chelo Katambo said the alleged abductions are seriously laughable and unfounded as the law-abiding party can never carry out such activities. Do Mr. Chelo says the Socialist Party wants to use the abduction propaganda to divert attention from the reality of failing to have candidates in areas such as Gwembe and Kapombo. He says that on alleged, uh, alleged incidents of abduction in Luangwa's Kaunga Ward, the party is awaiting investigations and will issue a statement on the matter based on the outcome. More in the following report. The United Party for National Development, UPND, has denied abduction allegations of Socialist Party SP Ward by election candidates in Thursday's nominations. Since the nominations on Thursday, SP officials on various fora have accused UPND of abducting three of its candidates in Luangwa, Kabompo, and Grembe Ward by elections. At the height of the accusations Friday, SP Vice President Cosmas Musumali held a press conference accompanied by an alleged victim in Luangwa's Kaunga Ward, her mother, and an eyewitness. This is we demand the arrest of Mwari Teta and his prosecution. We also demand that Anderson Banda, the UPND Rusaka chairperson, Kelly, the UPND Rwangwa district youth chairperson, Eddie Cloud Tembo, Junior Zulu, members at the Fair Boma, Timothy Tembo, the young brother to the UPND candidate in Kaunga Wand, all these participated, they got involved 
in kidnapping our candidate and must be arrested immediately. Reacting to the accusations, ruling UPND Media Director Jelo Katambo says the abductions are seriously laughable and unfounded. Mr. Katambo says SP is diverting attention from its failure to have candidates. We abducted their members. It's a total lie because they didn't have members in the first place to stand on the Socialist Party. Six uh, UPND members they tried to coerce to stand on their party who refused. If he wants us to produce the names of those uh, party members that were coerced to stand on the Socialist Party, we are ready to do that. In Chisanga, it was a, a, also a, a, the same situation. There was not even a single person who was abducted in Chisanga Ward. It is a laughable matter that somebody can think that the UPND can stop anyone from campaigning in Gwembe. That's a very serious laughable matter. The works of the UPND speak for themselves across the country. Not even a single part of this country has, no, has, has nothing good to talk about the UPND. Speaking in an interview, Mr. Katambo said UPND is a democratic party which abides by the rule of law and urges socialist party to desist from falsehoods. They know that they cannot win in this country. Socialist party cannot win any seat in this country. So in that vein, to cover their, their, their shame, they have decided to say, no, we could not uh, fully participate because we are bad. There's nobody who was bad. ECZ has got the reports. If they have got issues, let them report the matter to ECZ. The media is not uh, an adjudicator in, the, in issues of elections. The adjudicator in issues of elections is ECZ. So if they have got issues, let them go to ECZ. Let ECZ will carry out its own investigations, and ECZ will tell us whether indeed there was violence. He has since disclosed that the party will be guided by electoral commissions of Zambia's investigations in Luangwa, where it has instituted the exercise. Cherish Sibote. For Camnet News, Lusaka. Transparency International Zambia, TIZ, says the newly launched online whistleblower anonymous system, OZ, is a great milestone that the Anti-Corruption Commission has achieved. TIZ Executive Director Maurice Nyambe says members of the public have always had a passion to be involved in the fight against corruption. Therefore, the platform will facilitate their involvement. Mr. Nyambe adds that SEC must sensitize members of the public on the usage of the system so that they see the easy and value, the ease and value of ours. More in this report. On the 4th of April 2024, the Anti-Corruption Commission launched the online anonymous whistleblower system tagged a new and secure anti-corruption reporting system. The online system can be used on any smart gadget and allows individuals to follow up any progress related to their report through a secret tracking number automatically generated by the platform. Transparency International Zambia has commended ACC on their achievement as this will enhance transparency and accountability in society. TIZ Executive Director Maurice Nyambe says the online anonymous whistleblower system OAS will greatly help in the fight against corruption in Zambia. It is as uh, you know, one great opportunity that will allow members of the public to actually get involved uh, in the fight against corruption. And extending that further, we think that it is something that is going to contribute um, in terms of enhancing the transparency and accountability culture within society. And I think that can only be a good thing. Um, what is also clear is that um, it addresses a very critical stage of what I can call um, you know, the anti-corruption intervention chain, which is the fact that corruption has to be reported. So that is the very first step. And so for all those reasons, we believe that this is a good intervention that uh, the SEC has uh, put in place, and we can only commend them and wish them well, even as they roll it out. And uh, we hope that uh, members of the public will be able to uh, make use of uh, this uh, platform in order to uh, contribute to the fight against corruption. Mr. Nyambe has, however, urged ACC to carry out sensitization campaigns in communities and hopes members of the public who put the online platform to great use. I think it is important that uh, you know citizens are, are given awareness and maybe even are helped in one way or another in order for them to see the value of this system, but also the ease with which uh, you know uh, uh, the system can be used. And I do hope that uh, that is something that is going to be uh, to be very clear. Cherish Sibote for Camnet News, Lusaka. 
We'll take our first break. Join us for more news shortly after the break. Are you looking for a reliable and efficient courier company with international standards? Then let UBZ Courier, your trusted partner in swift and secure deliveries, be your ultimate choice. Whether it's a small package or a hefty consignment, UBZ Courier handles it all locally and internationally. Our modern call center ensures personalized attention for every client. For seamless deliveries within Zambia and beyond, trust UBZ Courier. Call us now on plus 260-763-062-680 or visit us at plot number 15, Mwapona Road, Woodland, Lusaka, Zambia. UBZ Kuvia, a world-class brand that can be trusted. Potatoes, the unsung heroes of flavor. From crispy chips to creamy mush, potatoes are the versatile superstars of your kitchen. Grown with love by our dedicated workforce drawn from around the community of Palavana. Savenda Farm's commitment is to see to it that we have potatoes that are grown right, healthy, big and tasty. For that quick fix or big celebration or that meal that brings family together, top chefs rely on the Savenda potato to create culinary masterpieces. And for others, it's that icebreaker to a delightful conversation. So, embrace the magic of Savenda potatoes. They're not just a side dish, they're the heart and soul of your kitchen. Savenda, save nations, develop Africa. Zambia, are you ready? Zambia Youth Conference 2024 is here with Archbishop Dr. Bernard and Mrs. Bibiana Nwaka under the theme Raising the Next Generation of Priests and Kings. From the 17th to the 21st of April 2024, speakers, Apostle Dr. Francis Piles, Bishop Robinson Fondong and others, and ministering in music, Ephraim, son of Africa. Time from the 17th to the 19th of April from 4 p.m. On the 20th of April from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. On the 21st of April from 9 a.m. at Living Water Global Church in Kitwe, Zambia, near Usakile, roundabout behind Puma Pumping Station. Come and become a history maker. Enjoy the benefits of an instant loan with us ranging from 1,000 kwacha to 750,000 kwacha paid express once collateral is viewed, valued and verified. Call us on 0763-595-359 or 0779-432-993. Classified Financial Express, here as your financial friend. This impending drought, it's time we look to alternatives of sustaining our crops. We as ISDP are promoting irrigation and water harvesting as the solution to challenges posed by climate change. Watch our 13-week series as we unfold the solutions for our crops. Catch us every Monday at 2040 hours, repeats every Tuesday at 1910. Welcome back. We'll continue with the news. An economist says there is need for the Bank of Zambia to put stringent regulation before financial institutions reach the level of insolvency. In an interview, economist Trevor Hambai says the country must learn from history that all commercial banks that are directly linked to government have been failing due to the tendency of lending money to unviable entities. 
Mr. Hambai asked that the Bank of Zambia should have resolved issues which led to the collapse of Invest Trust Bank in possession before it reached insolvency. More in this report. Invest Trust Bank PLC was April 3rd declared insolvent by the Bank of Zambia. On the faithful day, Invest Trust Bank customers stormed the bank's branches across Lusaka, demanding to know the plight of their investment in the financial institution following its reposition by the Bank of Zambia. The Bank of Zambia has stated that depositors will receive their money after a period of 90 days. Commenting on the matter, economist Trevor Hambai says the country needs a central bank that looks at the interest of depositors rather than institutions as they are the ones that suffer the most in such situations. To start to see a greater degree of compliance regulations, such a re regulation from the central bank before these institutions get to this level. Because the one who truly suffers around this position are the depositors who have got resources in there. And you'll find that now the bank, central bank is saying that they're going to be paying back in 90 days. Sometimes it exceeds the 90 days, but even 90 days is a period too long for you to wait if the money was sitting in the bank. What are you going to be living on if this is all the money that you had? And <clears throat> this is a very big issue that secondly the central bank must also put in place a regulation which ensures that when a bank collapses the central bank will pay back all the uh, depositors their resources and not just a percentage as it is mr hambai says bank of zambia must implement control measures of financial institutions especially those tied to the government as they lend out money to non-viable entities he has also called on both to pull up their socks in regulation as the insolvency of investors bank would have been avoided knowing the challenges the institution has been facing in the last two years. In the country where the financial institutions that are collapsing are more of the local banks rather than the international ones. And it is important that the central bank puts in place measures that are going to ensure that this is not happening, that any bank that is going to operate in this country meets all the statutory requirements. I think the issue around Invest Trust having collapsed is that in the financial circles, everybody had heard about the issues that uh, Invest Trust, the troubles that they were having from a very long time ago. It's been, this has been going on for two years, and you had expected that the central bank would have resolved this before we get to a point where the bank actually collapses, especially by virtue of the fact that Invest Trust is also, uh, government has also got shares in Invest Trust, is that they should have resolved this before the general public suffer. Cherish Sibote for Cabinet News, Lusaka. Thieves have stolen goods and money worth more than 250,000 kwacha after having unlawful access to data from 38-year-old man of Lusaka's Silverest area. Police spokesperson Ray Hamonga says on February 26, 2024, at 14 hours, the Kabata police station through the Maxo Sibongo police post received a report of theft and unlawful data access from Mr. Nachi Musonda. According to Mr. Musonda, a known criminal's store of stole two of his mobile phones, an iPhone, an iPhone 15 Pro Max and an iPhone 14 Pro Max, collectively valued at 70,000 kwacha. Mr. Hamonga says the stolen items are suspected to have facilitated the criminals in their illicit activities. They proceeded to transfer funds from Mr. Musonda's account to their own with the following amounts recorded. From his Zanako account, 175,251 kwacha, 35 ingwe. From his FNB account, 143,000 kwacha. From his Airtel mobile account, 9,995 kwacha, 99 ingwe. From his MTN mobile account, 23,000 kwacha. The total amount stolen amounted to 421,907 kwacha, 34 ingwe. These criminal activities transpired between the districts of Chipata and Lusaka districts spanning from the period from 23rd to the 26th of February 2024. Prompt police investigations were launched into the matter resulting in the apprehension of three suspects, namely Adrian Hantobolo Mungaila, age 30, of Makenvila, 
Kefas Musonda, age 27, of Garden House in Lusaka, and Bernard Musonda, age 32, of Garden House in Lusaka. During the arrest, we recovered several items believed to have been utilized in the commission of the crimes, including 75 MTN SIM cards, 35 Zamtel SIM cards, 201 Airtel SIM cards, a Wiko cell phone, an iTel cell phone, a Techno Common cell phone, a Samsung cell phone, and a Techno Spark cell phone. These seized items are suspected to have facilitated the criminals in their illicit activities. Further investigations reviewed evidence suggesting the existence of a criminal cartel. Chief Mumena of the Kaonde speaking people in Kalumbila district has issued a directive to his traditional leaders in his chiefdom to produce a minimum of one hectare of maize every farming season to avert food shortages in the area. The traditional leader says that farmers in his chiefdom need to rise to the drought challenge and ensure that households do, do not lack food. Chief Mumena was speaking during a field day in Kalumbila district. More in the following report. Bon Kalota, a renowned farmer of Kalumbila district, has set a platform for his fellow farmers to learn how he managed to cultivate 18 hectares of maize in this difficult season. He has hosted a few days supported by Koteva AgriScience just to appreciate the works of the farmer in the district. And Chief Mumena of the Kaonde speaking people in Kalumbila district graced the event. <laughs> This is the directive we are giving. Every community member must cultivate at least one hectare in order to affect the And I think that going forward, Kwaamba Gaboni Karota is a true leader in the farming and industrialization and is also a true leader when it comes to resilience. And we want to say thank you very much. We appreciate that government is bringing in a mechanization unit so that every farmer can be able to access those units. The Provincial Agricultural Coordinator, Moyo Shimawale, urged farmers to adopt climatic resilient strategies. The resilience and the adaptability of the Koteva varieties, as we have seen, has enabled farmers such as Mr. Kalota and yourself to overcome the adversity that we have experienced this year and to nevertheless achieve uh, impressive yields. Koteva AgriScience Managing Director Samson Nyendwa has commended government for putting up measures leading to agricultural transformation. Government is driving an aggressive agriculture transformation and productivity agenda. And to that effect, uh, they have set the target to achieve 10 million metric tons by 2027. We at Koteva AgriScience, the company behind the renowned Seed brand and the Pioneer Seed brand are equal to the task that uh, get over. Bon Kalota has shared the agriculture practices on his field. Farming is business. Some of these things for us to do better, we need the education. I'm saying that the knowledge of something which you are doing as a business. Other stakeholders invited also spoke at the event. And Kansanchi Foundation, we will do all we can to help the farmer. And uh, we will work with every organization that is there to support the farmer. We want to appreciate that you have grown him, but he plant him as a people that everyone is going to admire. Chapunga Manengu reporting for NICE in Kalumbila District. This is Kambia Television the News. We take a commercial break. We'll be back with International Sports News shortly. Enjoy the benefits of an instant loan with us ranging from 1,000 kwacha to 750,000 kwacha paid express once collateral is viewed, valued and verified. Call us on 0763-595-359 or 0779-432-993. Classified Financial Express, here as your financial friend.
Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. With this impending drought, it's time we look to alternatives of sustaining our crops. We as ISDP are promoting irrigation and water harvesting as the solution to challenges posed by climate change. Watch our 13-week series as we unfold the solutions for our crops. Catch us every Monday at 2040 hours, repeats every Tuesday at 1910. Welcome back. In international news, electoral campaigns for the legislative and regional polls have begun in Togo. Originally scheduled to take place on April 20, campaigning started on Saturday, April 13, and will last for two weeks before the vote on April 29. Although the upcoming polls will be the first regional elections in the country's history, it is the legislative elections that is attracting the most attention since it will be key to who becomes the country's next leader. This comes especially since the surprise adoption of a new constitution by the country's MPs on March 25. For this and other stories, we monitored Africa News. These are no ordinary beans. They're climate smart beans. The seeds could be the answer to growing crops as the world's weather shifts. Bred by Kenyan scientists and their foreign counterparts, the beans symbolize a beacon of hope for sustainable future free of hunger. We developed bean varieties that are climate smart by using varieties that are uh, drought and heat tolerant. They have no flat rains and they have uh, high levels of iron and zinc. So by crossing and back crossing those varieties, we came up with a bean variety that is uh, heat and drought tolerant and also cold, that also fits in the cold dry hierarchy. Dubbed nyota, meaning star in Kiswahili, the varieties of victory for Kenya's farmers and food security needs. Even then, some environmental activists have concerns. When we are breeding, we normally take into account the aspect of market. Because uh, the, the cooking time will give us varieties that cook faster. And when they cook faster, they reduce the cost of uh, fuel, like for example gas and uh, firewood, which probably is a, uh, will reduce the cost of living for the farmers. Most of these improved seeds that we see, they usually get their primary uh, plantic genetic resources from these indigenous seeds. So they go back to our seeds, they take our seeds, and then they go to the lab and do whatever they do themselves, and then they sell back these seeds to the farmers. And then you find that at the end of the day, farmers have to be buying these seeds every season because they can't replant these seeds. So they have to keep on buying seeds every new season. And that is keeping farmers in a cycle of debt. Benson Gitonga is one of the early adopters of the Nyota bean and has witnessed remarkable increases in yield and profitability. I can harvest 9 to 12 bags from an acre of land. Unlike other varieties where I would only get five to seven bags, the difference upon comparison is substantial. When I bring beans to the market, they consistently fetch a good price, selling for 200 Kenya shillings per kilogram, while other varieties often go for 100 shillings a kilo. Kenya's annual bean production is 600,000 metric tons, far below national demand. 
It has now gone 365 days of the war in Sudan between the country's military, chaired by General Abdel Fattah Burhan, and the notorious Rapid Support Forces, commanded by General Mohamed Amdan Daglu. The war has killed thousands and forced 8 million people to flee their homes, according to the UN. The country. Uh, another almost 2 million have gone over the borders and, and outside the region, uh, which also has a destabling effect uh, on the neighboring countries. Uh, the food security situation is our biggest concern right now. The precarious conditions in the country do not just concern deaths and famine. Experts have also highlighted the rising spate of gender-based violence and other abuses. Atrocities, human rights abuses, uh, breaches of international humanitarian law, uh, gender-based violence is rampant. You know, the, these are the hallmarks of this conflict. And as you mentioned, they, we've seen them before in Sudan. What's different? I think is a bit of the apathy from the international community to intervene uh, and to bring pressure on the parties to uh, come to a ceasefire. The coup and the war were a major blow to Sudanese hopes for a democratic rule after decades of military and Islamist rule that turns the own of African nation into a pariah state for decades. We know we have the wherewithal to do something about it if we were given both the resources and the access, and yet we don't have them. Um, this is not going to be a, a story that many Sudanese are going to want to tell their children, uh, nor should it be something that the world wants to, to recount. UN experts said in a report to the UN Security Council earlier this year that Darfur is experiencing its worst violence since 2005. <laughs> Campaigns for the legislative and regional elections have begun in Togo. Starting from Saturday, April 13, the campaigns will last for two weeks before the vote on April 29. Although these are the first regional elections in the country's history, it is the legislative elections that are attracting the most attention. It comes since the surprise adoption of the new constitution by the country's MPs on March 25. Following the vote, which shifts the country from a presidential to a parliamentary system, Togo's head of state, for Yasigbe, attempted to appease the population by delaying the promulgation of the text and requesting a second reading in the National Assembly. The opposition avowed protest and resistance. And in our sports news tonight, Chipolo Polo, Chipolo Polo 2012 Afghan winning player Renford Calabar has been involved in a fatal road accident along Kafiwe Road. Police spokesperson Ray Hamonga says also involved in the accident is an unidentified female driver of unknown residence who was driving a Mercedes-Benz car and registered from south to north direction. Mr. Amonga says the driver succumbed to her injuries at the scene of the accident. He says the passenger, 38-year-old Calabar of Mfulira, Copperbell province, was on board the Mercedes-Benz vehicle and sustained suspected internal injuries and was later transported to the University Teaching Hospital for medical attention. By broadcast time, the UTH Public Relations Officer, uh, Public Relations Officer Nzeba Chanda said the former Chipolo Polo player Kalaba was alive but in a critical condition contrary to social media reports. On that note, we've come to the end of Kamel Television Main News tonight. The headlines once again. UPND laughs off Socialist Party candidate abduction claims. School grants misuse revelations sudden knackers. Government finalizes drought disaster response plan. In international news, Togo's legislative election campaigns begin. And sports news, former Chipolo Polo striker Kalaba in critical condition after road accident. Our coming verse of the day is coming from the book of Hebrews 11 verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. 
My name is Jeffrey Ziambo and thank you for watching Come to Television Menus tonight. Good night.